My name's Lyle Brewster. I'm the course director for uh, paramedicine at CSU. Um, joining me today, my colleague, Linda Derriman. I'll let Linda say hello. Hi, guys. Nice to meet you all. Linda is the course director for nursing and we'll be doing nursing um, after the paramedic presentation. Um, thanks for coming along, JJ. I'm not sure if you've got audio or not, but happy for you to um, jump in at the end and ask any questions or feel free to ask any questions as we go along as well. So the Master of Paramedicine is the first presentation. Uh, just acknowledgement to country. So uh, we pay our respect to all First Nations elders, both past and present, from the lands where Charles State University students reside. In particular, we acknowledge the Wiradjuri, Ngunnawal, Gundagara and Biripai peoples of Australia, who are, who are the traditional owners, uh, custodians of the land where our campuses are located. And we also um, welcome any other uh, Indigenous folks joining us today for the presentation. Uh, so Yin, <laughs> and Linda's been trying to help me with this pronunciation, Ying Yamara Wanangana, how'd that go Linda, was that okay? <laughs> Pretty close. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is a Wiradjuri phrase, meaning the wisdom of respectfully knowing how to live well in a world worth living in. So Charles Sturt University, oh, we, we pride ourselves on having our graduates leave our courses um, using this ethos or this, this set of values that we've used um, with Charles Sturt and that our graduates meet these, uh, these, these, um, these the ethos or the values that we're using here with our Indigenous folks at Charles Sturt University. So thanks very much for that, to them for letting us uh, use their values and the ethos ethos in our education. So I'll be giving you a short overview of the Charles Sturt Masters of Paramedicine with Specialisations program. Um, it's it's uh, been running, this is the third year that this course has been running now, um, gives you a chance to advance your career, consolidate your skills or, or just keep learning. Hi Danielle, thanks for joining Hi. us. Welcome. Sorry, I'm late. No, all good, no problem. You haven't missed anything yet. Um, I'm not very good at self-promoting. Um, I'm a paramedic, so we're normally taught to be quite humble. Um, I do click up 30 years this year though, which is a bit of a milestone for me since I joined the profession in November 1990. Um, spent my time with what was QATB becoming QAS and then headed off to New Zealand for eight years. And I've been with CSU for eight years this July. Um, so connection with industry. So we have um, connections, our academics come from all over the world, really. We've got academics based in Australia, um, who've had Australian careers. We've got New Zealand um, paramedics teaching into our program, Canadian paramedics. We have a whole handful of UK paramedics, as you might've seen the, uh, the exodus of undergraduate paramedics to the UK. And we've played a big part in that. And sometimes we um, send about 50% of our cohort to the UK from our undergraduate cohort. But we've got staff teaching into um, our masters from all those backgrounds and all those countries having worked for different ambulance service providers all around the world. So I think we're a pretty, a very well-rounded team when it comes to bringing you industry and professional experience from uh, not just Australia, but other countries as well. All right, so our course overview, uh, we have a, uh, our course is called an articulated set. So what you can do is you can, you can kind of pick and choose how much study you want to do at any time, but they all sit inside the masters of paramedicine. So um, we have a graduate certificate, which is four subjects. So normally taken over, over two semesters or one, two sessions or one year, uh, students who are working full time do, you know, two subjects per session and they pick up the qualification for grad certificate. Um, you can then have a break if you like as a full time working paramedic you can have six months off or 12 months off and then come back to us, uh, reapply to do the graduate diploma, bring all that grad cert credit back with you and then keep going. Grad diploma is also four subjects uh, uh, that will take you, you know, again, if you did part time, two subjects per semester, that would take you, you know, nearly a year or two, two sessions to do that. And the master's is also 32 points. So four subjects of electives, or we have a new research um, subject, which is beginning next year from 2021, where you can um, partake in a research project based on a paramedicine topic of your choice, which is pretty exciting. We're pretty proud about that and offering that as well. So a couple of choices there. Um, and the grad cert, the grad diploma, and the masters, you can either do by elective or you can do by research. And if you were thinking about, you know, enhancing the profession and adding to the body of knowledge, I would suggest that you go down the research pathway in that master's component. All right, all good. So exit points in articulated sets means that you can complete a set and a set is the grad cert, the grad diploma and then the masters. So you can complete the grad cert, you can jump out for six months or 12 months or two years and have a break and from study and then come back to us and bring all your full credit back with you. So you recredit your, your points back in and away you go again from the point that you re-enter. 
All good. Any questions? Happy? Danielle's nodding. It's fantastic. <laughs> Can't see JJ's screen. Um, so we were the first provider of a paramedicine undergraduate degree in Australia. So we've got proud history and a really big um, connection to the profession. So we first started offering um, what you would call probably a top up degree. So for people like myself who had vocational industry training, which was done by their service and a little bit of, you know, a bit of uh, TAFE college, vocational education going on with that. So Charles Sturt were the first ones to offer a, uh, a top up degree for people who came from a background like myself. And now we offer um, undergraduate degrees and postgraduate degrees. Um, the critical care specialization, which is very, very popular in our course. We have about 190 students enrolled in that specialization at the moment. So that's heading off to your, you know, your um, critical care skills, which is your invasive skills and your invasive pharmacology, you know, thinking about maybe single responding in a, in a, on a motorcycle or a helicopter or a boat and all those kind of things, uh, which is a pretty common outcome for, um, you know, paramedic career progression at that point. ECP is more, you're heading off to that, you know, trying to decrease the amount of patients going to the hospital, doing sutures on site, um, you know, maybe doing some pharmacology like antibiotics and wound care, all those things helping a patient to stay home and receive good quality care at home whilst not kind of, you know, clogging up and ramping those hospital systems that, that we are a part of sometimes. So yeah, two specialisations there that you can choose from. To be honest, the critical care specialization, specialization is the more popular one at the moment. And we have a few students sitting in the extended care um, program. I think ECP will take off more as, um, you know, as the push comes from the government for, for paramedics to start working more on that field. And there's a little bit more sort of industry uh, and professional support for those ECPs and getting them out into the rural locations where they can do some really good work from there. Um, all delivered online. Uh, there's one residential school, which I'll talk about in the next slide but you come along online like you are now for lectures or tutorials and the practical component of those um, specialisations are covered at a residential school um, and there is an external practicum so there's one subject in, um, in that master's set where you head off and do clinical placement either with an ambulance service or a hospital or other healthcare locations that's done in conjunction with us some of our partners and with the student so you know if you're, if you're working in South Australia or Western Australia doing our course, we can help you to sort out some placement in your local area at that point. Um, yeah, so uh, session, so this is just the, the breakdown of full-time versus part-time in the first part of the slide there. So um, one and a half years full-time, most people choose to do it part-time um, for the master's. Grad diploma, one year full-time, but normally done two, two years part-time. And the grad cert, uh, half a year full-time, which is four, four subjects in one session. But most people do two subjects per session, which is part-time, and they do that across the one year, um, one year period. Uh, intakes for us, so March session, one you've just missed out on that one but currently we have applications open for a July session two start date with us and our start date proper is July 13th from memory and like I said online study mode with a, a single residential school and then a practical component that we would help you to organize uh, at your end. Uh, covering the residential school. So if you're in the critical care stream, that's APS 505 as a subject number. So critical care skills. So you pick up all your hand skills, uh, your invasive skills, you pick up all your pharmacology skills. You put those in with your clinical knowledge and your clinical reasoning that you've been learning and you've been already honing from your paramedic care. And you come to residential school, lots of simulations, um, you know, for you to practice uh, all that sort of holistic patient care going on there. And then some separate, you know, hand skill stations like doing, you know, cricoid uh, airway care, you know, intubation, all those things that are a requirement for critical, critical care. And the same for extended care skills. So you come in, you take the, uh, the academic knowledge you've got so far in the course, bring that all in, start putting the skills into play using the simulation equipment and the skill stations that we have here at the university. Um, the residential schools are both conducted at Bathurst. And at the moment, we've been um, putting the two sets of students in together. So if you're a critical care, uh, on the critical care pathway, you would be doing your uh, residential school with the extended care students as well. So getting a nice sort of cross section of students working together there. They happen in June uh, each year. They're a five day residential school, um, eight hours per day. We offer accommodation in Bathurst. There's, there's, um, there's professional accommodation and student accommodation, and they're both run at Bathurst, that residential school there. So we 
do have another campus at Port Macquarie, but we don't offer the um, masters or the grad, the grad diploma residential school from Port Macquarie. Uh, if you want to get in touch, so that's my contact details there. So I'm, like I said, I'm the course director for paramedicine, um, email, phone number. We also have a master's of paramedicine coordinator and that's Sonia Maria. And Sonia looks after um, all the students that are inside that in regards to, you know, which pathway might they like to study or, you know, what are the subjects look like. So you can also contact Sonia on those two contacts there. This presentation uh, following on from the masters of, of paramedicine is about the masters is Master's Nursing with Specialisation. Firstly, I'd just like to acknowledge the uh, Wiradjuri, Gundungara, Biripai and Ngunnawal peoples as the traditional custodians of the lands, waterways and skies upon which um, our campuses are located and also acknowledge all of those other nations out there where our students might be residing at the moment, particularly with COVID and everybody is back on home country. I'd also like to pay my respects to elders past, present and those who are emerging um, and also extend that respect to anybody who might be joining me here today as a fellow Indigenous person on this um, short presentation. So Yinjimara Wanangana, if you are a previous uh, student of CSU, you may have heard this once or twice. And for those of you who may be considering joining us, Yinjimara Wanangana means uh, creating a, a world that is full of wisdom and respectfully knowing how to live well and, um, and that world be worth living in. So that's something that we truly embed within our ethos in Charles Sturt and we um, seek to produce graduates who make a true difference out in the world. We are well renowned at Charles Sturt for um, well known for producing work ready graduates and in our master's program we build and strengthen those professional learnings that you may have gained in your undergraduate program and then moving into the master's. So I'm going to give you a brief overview of the Masters of Nursing and it is an articulated course. You may have heard my colleague Lyle uh, talk about an articulated course as well in the Masters of Paramedicine. So we have the same in the Masters of Nursing, meaning that you might enter into a Masters but you can get a Grad Cert, a Grad Dip or a Masters and we'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment. Um, certainly we will be looking at the Masters of Nursing and think about how that might be able to advance your career and consolidate, consolidate your skills or perhaps you just want to keep learning and that's per perfectly fine as well. Who am I? Um, some of you may know me or remember me if you were a nurse at CSU. I have been a, a lecturer here for five to six years but I've now moved into the course director role. So I have over 30 years of nursing experience in the nursing field in areas such as aged care, primary health care, emergency care and the majority of my career I'd probably say 95% has been working in the rural and regional areas. It's a place that I hold dearly and absolutely love working. I think that's where nurses truly can make a difference. So why come to study at Charles Sturt University? Well, apart from the fact that it's a simply amazing university, we have a strong reputation for being um, truly excellent in providing online learning. At Charles Sturt in our nursing program, we have delivered nursing here for over 40 years. So we've got a really strong history in providing that excellence in nursing education. So um, at Charles Sturt, oops, it's gone there. At Charles Sturt, the idea with the studying anywhere and any time and, and making it fit your life work balance. Um, we are one of the most experienced online education providers, as I've said, and we've got over 70 courses that are available to study online. Of course, Masters of Nursing is the one that you're interested in here today. You can choose to do some subjects um, on campus or online, that's in other degrees. For the Masters of Nursing, everything is online. 
They also at Charles Sturt offer some online courses, including some short intensive learning sessions for hands-on experience. So that might be something that if you're not quite sure you want to come into a, nurse, uh, a master's, you might want to do a shorter course, there's that option as well. And online students certainly do have the um, ability to access our campuses and learning centres at any time. Can I just um, ask what the, um, what the shorter courses were? I okay. Come across them. Yeah, I don't know if you heard about the federal funding that was out there to support um, graduates to come, uh, to come back in and do some short courses. So there's, at the moment, we're offering a graduate certificate in leadership management. That's one of the ones that's up. That might be of interest, particularly for those who are working in the health field, both mm -hmm. for paramedics and for nurses. That might be something that might interest you. Um, there are a range of other shorter courses too. So you'd have to go onto the CSU handbook mm. and the CSU webpage um, to have a look. But that's one that does come to mind. That's one that's just been um, approved. Mm -hmm. And we've got that come going to be running, I think, in the 60 session. I think Lyle, is that correct? Yes, Lyle's nodding. Great. Thanks. Yeah. yeah no just problem. added in the link, Danielle, if you wanted ah. to have a look exactly what those courses are. Awesome, thanks. Thanks, Katie. So, of course, you know, that work-life balance, we know that people who are coming to do a Masters of Nursing have most likely um, have already got a career, are working full-time, and that's why the majority of our students tend to take up part-time study in preference to full-time study, but full-time study is available if you want to go that way. Um, at Charles Sturt, you do have the flexibility to plan the way you want to study. Uh, you can study when and where you like. So you're obviously going to study from home, but we're all studying from home at the moment with COVID. So fits in perfectly, wouldn't you say? And we are absolutely here to make sure that you're supported through that learning journey. We have very strong connections with industry and the people that teach, with the academics that teach within the uh, Masters of Nursing um, all are at master uh, or nurse practitioner level or um, they have PhDs or working towards their PhDs. But they also come from a very strong background in rural and remote health, chronic care, emergency care and leadership and management. So we have a really strong team in our Masters of Nursing. They, they're the people that have walked the walk and they do the, and talk the talk. They know what they're talking about because they've actually lived that experience. And they've come into academia to share that experience and help grow a future working nursing workforce. Mm -hmm. So a little bit more specifically about the Masters of Nursing and I would suggest that there's probably going to be a few more questions, particularly around this slide. As I indicated earlier, there's, we've got a really strong um, history of delivering nursing education with over 40 years experience. And that includes all of our um, campuses, Walker, Albury, um, Bathurst, it, and we have just added Port Macquarie to our uh, repertoire of campuses where we deliver nursing. Of course, the Masters of Nursing is all completely delivered online, so you don't actually come into any campuses. And there are no residential schools for the Masters of Nursing. So that's something to think about. It's sometimes hard to get time off from work to be able to do those residential schools. But in the subjects that you might be selecting in the coursework stream, um, some of those have work-related assessments. So you're really consolidating your knowledge in that particular specialty area. So in our Masters of Nursing, you can either do that by research or by coursework. Um, and it provides registered nurses with a platform to build your knowledge and experience. We really seek to enhance your critical thinking and your decision making skills and research related skills. So to be very clear, there's two um, different streams. There's the Masters of Nursing by Research, where you would develop up an ethics proposal, um, get ethics approval and develop a, um, a research project. And then there's the coursework. And we, the majority of our uh, students that come to CSU do it via coursework. And the streams that we offer um, that coursework are in clinical education. So say you're a nurse educator and you want to get a qualification that would uh, stand you in good stead for promotion and for um, perhaps going up further 
at C and E one, two, three, um, or perhaps going on to C and C level. So we have clinical education, we have leadership management, absolutely one of the courses tailored to growing our future nurse unit managers and um, you know, up to nurse, nurse unit manager, nurse manager and so on. Chronic and complex care and our emergency nursing streams. And these are all taught by people that have strong um, experience in those particular areas. Danielle, you've gone off mute again. So is there another question? Oh, yeah, no, just um, on that. And I gather you can mix and match between the streams. Fantastic question. And I'm really pleased that you asked that. The advantage of our Masters of Nursing at present is that it really is um, a, a degree that you can tailor to whatever you, it's a degree by your design. Mm. So we offer um, some suggested electives there's only one core subject that you must do across the whole of the masters. Um, we have recommendations if you want to specialise. Say if you want to specialise in clinical education, we have there's four subjects that you will that you are required to do uh, mm -hmm. within that course, and then you um, have to choose have you have to do the core subject, which is the evidence based research one, and then you are able to choose six other subjects that you would like to learn about to get your degree. You don't actually um, have to take a specialisation either. You can purely come in and do a Masters of Nursing and the only core subject you have to do is the evidence-based one and you can select four to um, 10 other subjects mm -hmm. to really create a Masters of Nursing that meets your needs. Can I so, just clarify from what I've the information that I've read I have got a graduate certificate mm -hmm. from the College of Nursing Fabulous. Um, that would take off yes. specialization so then I'd only need to do six units so um, if you've got a graduate certificate and thank you for asking that question that's brilliant so if you've got a graduate certificate you will get credit mm -hmm. for that graduate certificate so you basically get the first year off. Um, as you're coming in with an, a specialisation that you've done elsewhere, if you want to actually get a Masters of Specialisation, you have to give up some of that credit. So say you've got a, um, a grad cert in perioperative nursing. Well, we don't offer perioperative nursing, so you can't have a Masters of Nursing with, in specialisation in perioperative nursing, if you get my drift. Yeah. Am yeah. I explaining that well? Yes. So, but if you do have a graduate certificate, you can come in and, and it's me who does the credit assessments and I say, wow, they've got a graduate certificate. Yes, you can have the first year off. Yeah. So you only have to do um, two more years and you would complete your um, master's if you're doing it part-time. Yeah. You could, if you're doing it full-time, you'd have it done in a year. Can I just ask, is there any advantage like career -wise, progression wise if you have that specialty tag next to your master's or is it generally enough to have the master's? It depends really. Okay, that's a really good question. I used to be <laughs> a, an executive director of nursing. So okay. great question to ask me, what am I looking for? Yeah. So if you're doing a generalised, specialised master's of nursing, um, and you're perhaps wanting to go for clinical nurse specialist or clinical nurse consultant, if the specialty that you've done in your master's is the same as what you're going for in a clinical CNS position, then I'd say, yep, great. If you've done a master's without a specialisation, um, then you would have to provide evidence to me that it's relevant to the area that you're working in, if I was the director of nursing. Sorry, I've got my old hat on. No, that, that's um, really good. That's the sort of career insights... I need yeah, um, great. to get me where I want to go. So if you think that you might want to go into the education stream, mm. then I would certainly recommend that you do the Masters of Nursing with clinical education as a specialisation. Mm -hmm. If you want to do leadership and management, you want to become a num, you want to go move into admin and management, then I'd recommend you do the leadership management one. But if you're not quite sure, if you want to perhaps um, eventually go into diabetes or asthma management, then you might consider doing chronic and complex care or emergency nursing because mm -hmm. both of those relate. Mm -hmm. 
to that area? Because where I am at the moment is I've just got myself a position as a clinical facilitator mm -hmm. through a competing university. Um, but so I really want to extend further into the education field, but mm -hmm. I do still want to have a bit of a leadership thing under my belt as well to keep my options open as I get further along in my career because I've got so, a lot of years left to work. <laughs> and that's really handy. Um, so what you could do, you could, uh, if you didn't want to accept the credit of your degree that you've got at through the College of Nursing, you could come in and do, say, the first year just clinical education and then second year you can just do leadership management so that when they, somebody looks at your transcript, they're going to see, oh, she's got education and she's got management in this master's. How wonderful. Okay. Or you could get your, and this is probably something, Danielle, we could talk offline. Mm -hmm. Another option is get the credit yeah. for your um, grad cert. Yeah. You have to do a 16 credit point evidence-based research one. Mm -hmm. um, you could do four of the clinical education ones and just one of the leadership management. So you'd still get the uh, specialisation for education. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah, 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 it does. Thank you. Fantastic. There's a few, quite a few other people online. I can't see what the chat box is doing. So is there anything there that, um, has anybody got any questions that I can help with? Nothing in the chat at the moment, but I'll call them out if they come through. So if anyone else wants to add them in the chat, they're more than welcome to. So I'm almost at the end um, of my presentation. The other thing uh, for entry criteria while we were talking about that is that you do actually need to be a registered nurse with ARPA to come in to do the Masters of Nursing. We do take international students and we do have um, links with Canada. So if you are watching this later and you're a, Can a perspective Canadian student, as long as you are registered with your own professional board in Canada, we accept that as evidence of registration and you can enter into the Masters of Nursing. Um, because the Canadian students, if you are watching, um, because you do a four year nursing degree, you actually get um, some credit too towards the Masters of Nursing. Um, in Australia, we do a three-year degree. In um, Canada, they do a four-year degree. That fourth year is equivalent to what we would know as an honours year. So that gives them the equivalence of a grad cert, if um, that makes sense. So that's something also to think about if you're from overseas and you're watching this, um, please think about um, the amount of credit that we can provide for you at Charles Sturt in our Masters. So this is a fairly standard slide. Those who were here for Lyle's um, presentation would have seen something very similar. So our Masters of Nursing, if you were to do it full time, it takes one and a half years. Um, in part time, it's three years. Grad dip, one year, two years part time. Grad cert can be done in six months if you do it full time. And it generally takes a year if you're doing it part time, two subjects in each session. And we generally find that that's enough, particularly when you're working full time, because we've got to be able to make sure that you can um, be successful in that study and not, not, not take on too much. With our Masters of Nursing, we actually offer three intakes a year. So you can apply for session one, two or three, or you might see it written as the 60 session, the 30 session or the 90 session. That's just another way that we talk about um, our sessions here at Charles Sturt. So um, applications are open now for the second session, which commences in July, which is the 2020-60 session. Can I just ask, with your, um, it being broken up to into sessions, um, how many units are you doing per session for full-time and how many for part-time and what's the Okay, so if you did a four, if you did full-time, you would do four subjects. Mm -hmm. Each. If you did it third. each session. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you did it part-time, it would be two subjects. Session. That's if it was what we call an eight credit point subject. Yeah. Some of our subjects are 16 credit point. Yeah. And so therefore you only take one subject in that one session because it's, that's the part-time equivalent. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So basically in 12 months you're doing it to, uh, yeah, you can do six units. Yes, you can. Okay. Yep. Um, not all subjects offered over the 90 sessions, okay. so you would need to be very careful in selecting your subjects and I would be certainly happy to provide some advice about what would be the best course progression for you yeah. if you particularly want to get through it that much quicker. So, um, yeah. So it'd be really good if you want to contact me, Danielle. Yeah. So scholarships, um, I'm not sure if you're aware, but there are certainly a large range of scholarships that are available, particularly to nursing. Um, there are postgraduate scholarships that are offered through New South Wales Health. There are scholarships that are offered through the university. There are other scholarships um, uh, such as... Uh, there's Three Rivers? Yeah, Three Rivers Scholarships, there's the Judith Meppen Scholarship, there's the Puggy Hunter Scholarships. Um, if you're an Indigenous student, there's additional scholarships that you perhaps might be able to qualify for. And, you know, this is something that people think, oh, scholarship, I'm never going to get it. You know what? There are so many scholarships that are offered and because students don't think that they'll ever get it, these scholarships don't get used. So the only way to get a scholarship is to apply. Um, and, you know, we can help you with that. As there's somebody within the university who will help you with advising which scholarships you can get. There's a link there. You might want to take a screenshot for those people that are listening to this. Um, where you can find out more about your study scholarships. Scholarships can cover things like your course fees, could cover um, your textbooks, etc. So uh, really, really worthwhile having a look at that, particularly because, you know, it's a cost. So um, we aren't education, it, there's a charge for education, we understand that, but there's ways to be able to support you with that. And to chat online. So if you want to talk to a child student advisor, if any questions you might have about the university, you can certainly um, use that email address. Or if you wish to contact me, um, you can use ask at csu.edu.au. I'll repeat that again. Ask, A-S-K, at csu.edu. .au. You I've can, just popped um, that in the chat box for anyone that wants it as well. Sorry. Continue. And if you just put in, thank you, Katie. And if you just pop in the subject line, nursing, it might get to me a couple of days quicker. So um, that's a really handy tip.